what's up, guys? We got a bit of a treat here. I'm narrating doubles. Um, you won't see any of this besides this game this season, but um, I've been following it here a bit, and this is also the deciding game, and I have nothing else to do, so I might as well. Um, so for FASB, we have um, a bit of a standard team with a Chansey. I, I feel like I see Chansey more with a Manectric than Coco, but um, if only because of the Intimidate synergy, but I think this probably works as well. Coco Kajaram has nice synergy, and this team pretty flows pretty well. Um, anyway, we have standard... Um, Double Intimidate, actually, with Incineroar and Landorus T. Landorus T could also be potentially the Stealth Rocker. Um, we've been seeing an Uprise in Stealth Rock. And then we also have Incineroar, Mega Metagross. Yeah, just pretty standard squad. And then um, Bowman looks like he has some, like, Belly Drum Transform synergy going. Uh, Mega Salamence, interesting pick, could be Tailwind. Um, really just had a lot of damage. Um, oh, it's nicknamed Yu Yu Got T-Man. So I'm already rooting for Fespy, unfortunately. because I'm That's a big trigger warning for me. Anyway, he's got a Moongus, which seems to be popping up a bit more lately as a pivot, as well as Kartana, two grass types. Um, that could enable Incineroar and Kyurem, perhaps. Although, um, it's worth noting that the Steel type on Kartana gives a neutrality to um, Ice Beam, and if it's got some special defensive views, you can probably tank that. I know a lot of wonky Kartana spreads in DOU are used, and also a Sacred Sword to deter to Kyurem and Incineroar. Um, Electric Terrain is up from both sides, actually, yeah. I mean, Coco, um, Kyurem... Versus Mew, Coco. Um, and interestingly enough, we're going to see a Taunt, which is probably going to neutralize the Mew. Um, Icy Wind, Nature's Madness are shaded. Um, so is the Mew going to be... Yeah, Mew is not able to Tailwind. Um, unsurprising, to say the least. Anyway, um, pretty much both members of Bowman's team are now slowed down. But in return for that, 50% uh, Nature's Madness is going to chip down to here on the half, of course. Um, interesting to see what will come next. Um, if I had to imagine... The um, Cocos are probably both be attacking. We could perhaps see um, a scout of some sorts from the Kyurem trying to stay alive. And I think the Mew um, could have a U-turn, Volt Switch kind of move, or it could just pivot out to something. Although not much is really safe here. Um, hard to say. I was going to initially say maybe a Moongus, but I'm not really sure if that's in the best position because the Kyurem is staring it down. And there are a number of options that the Coco could go for that could lead into a less than ideal situation. So it's a good start for Fespi. Anyway, Dazzling Gleam is going to do a whole boatload because it's Life Orb. And we're going to see the Z Sub Zero Slammer from the Kyurem. So that's going to give Bowman an early lead. And to add um, insult, insult, injury, um, unfortunately, the Coco is not going to be able to take out the Kyurem as it's gone for a Volt Switch, which is well, fine and well, but it's not a very move. It's not going to take it out. That does give um, Bowman two fresh Pokemon to send on out. And hopefully um, reset the game a bit. But definitely an early advantage for Fespi. Um, while his charm is significantly weakened, um, Bowman is down a Mew, which could very well have been a pivotal piece to setting up a winning position for the Bowman side. And on top of that, the Coco is now weakened and forced out. Anyway, Salamence is going to come on in here, which more likely than not could threaten to kill the Kira. I'm, I'm not sure about the Coco, however. Um... Could we see the Coco in the other slot? I'm not entirely sure, quite frankly, as the Dazzling Gleam is going to do a fuck ton of that. And it also a fuck ton of immense. Anyway, um, this is a pretty important turn. Bowman has to get this correct if he wants to maneuver himself into a winning position. I feel like because the Coco really threatens the immense and the Kyurem really threatens the Amoongus, but the immense being quicker than the Kyurem essentially let it die. Um, I'm sure that the Mance lives one gleam, but um, is its health necessary for something, or is Fespi going to try and pull back and preserve either of these Pokemon for later on? Um, definitely something to consider here. If I had to imagine, though, um, there's no way that the Kyurem can now one-shot the Amoongus, so that may very well be a spot that... Oh, neither. Oh, both are going to switch, interestingly enough. Um... We're going to see a Hyper Voice. It's going to do a mere 12% to the Chansey and a bit more, um, a 29% to the Incineroar, both neutral hits, and then a Sludge Bomb from the Chansey. I mean, that was kind of a cover-all move um, from the Bowman side. That's smart. Um, Risk-taking significant damage from a Dazzling Gleam, but overall it kind of um, forced out the Kyurem for sure, so that, that gets them a bit more leverage. However, I'm not sure how much you could do against these two, especially with Incineroar getting a free fake out here. And Chansey um, could go for a number of things. I imagine it could heal up. It could potentially be rocks, even. Um, could Psywave, wave, etc. Um, so let's wait and see. I think the Bowman might um, 
take this opportunity to switch out his own um, Among Us, but I'm not quite sure. Um, Bowman's timer's down to 180. Oh, he's going to go for Protect instead. And just another Hyper Voice to chip in Sinnoh. Fair enough. Uh, Protect turned out to be a good play, as the only offensive move that the Fespi side went for was a knockoff into the Among Us. So that being out of the picture for that turn is a bit more beneficial for Bowman than um, it could have otherwise been. Anyway, um, looking at this position now, um, I don't really know what Mentis for moves are, honestly. Uh, shit, man. Um, is there a chance that it could kill the Incineroar? I'm sure there is with some other move like Draco. I don't, I'd imagine it doesn't want an Earthquake. Perhaps some Dragon move. But um, Hyper Voice isn't doing the trick. Anyway, oh, okay, so it's going to be forced out, actually. And Double Edge, oh, okay, so Double Edge was indeed the move. And a critical hit on the non mega Metagross doing a bit under half, so that's good damage. However, um, in return for that, while the... Um, Excuse me, while the Azumarill come in, came in safely, the Chansey landed a crucial Thunder Wave on the Mega Salamence, thus making it slower than the Metagross, Land Risk, and Curum. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, so that neutralizing the Mence in conjunction with the more threatening than um, most Metagross coming in really could put Bowman in a bit of a a negative position, I would say, but I think a lot depends on what Fespi prioritizes here. Um, I'm fairly certain that this Azumarill is Belly Drum, Aqua Jet Protect, and then like Play Rough for Knock. I don't remember which one it was in the fourth slot, but either way, um, it can be threatening as the Kyurem is weakened, the Coco should die to. Oh, he's going to switch out. Okay. Interestingly enough, oh, and it's going to die to Ice Punch. So, yeah, that puts, um, I, well, at least a Cartana came into the Toxic. Yeah, this looks really challenging for the Bowman side. Yeah, I'm not sure what, what he's going to do here, but the Cartana is in, and that is on the threatening side. So, hey, that could be something. Sorry, um, okay. So, Coco's in. Coco threatens Gross, Chansey threatened by Cartana. So maybe there's a chance here. Whoa. Pardon me. Anyway, um Chansey being dual status is kind of interesting. That means that the rocks are definitely in land but I don't even think you need the rocks. Also worth noting about Lander is that Earthquake is insanely free. Or Earth Power rather. Hmm. Insert ground move is relatively free with the Mance down. And, um, well, Mungus not being in at this point. Hmm. Wow, me, me narrating doubles. What does this world come to? Um, anyway. Looks as if the um, fast piece side has an advantage, but he's taking his time here to solidify his position. Fair enough. I imagine that we're going to probably see um, more of a cautionary turn here from him, and probably more of an aggressive attempt at making progress and getting back into this from Bowman, but we'll have to wait and see as to what exactly either of those plans entail. Um, you know, fast piece is definitely in the back foot on this exact position, but he's up two Pokemon and then some, so he can definitely afford to do that, I would say. Hmm. Excuse me. Um, hmm. Um, Bowman's timer is down to 120 as of before this turn. Now Fespies went from 240 to 120. Okay, interesting. Thunderbolt's going to take out the Metagross. Substitute from Cartana on a Thunder Wave. And it failed. Okay, really good turn for Bowman there. 
Um, I imagine that we're going to see one of the um, Landorus or Incineroar here. I guess Coco wouldn't be out of the question, but I'm not quite sure why you'd go Coco with sub super high Cortana. Hmm. Wow, that Cortana is insanely dangerous behind a substitute looking at it. Actually, that is really a magnificent turn for Bowman there. Coco actually is going to come out, which actually Dazzling Gleam is a fine play, as not only does it kill the Coco, but it also breaks the substitute of the Cartana. The issue is that the Z move from Cartana would be able to take it out with ease if it is Bloom Doom, which I believe more often than not they are in doubles. And with it then being taken out, if the Tapu Coco on Bowman's side is somehow preserved, say, by going to something like the Amoongus, then it not only would be the fastest Pokemon, but it also could abuse a number of things. Um, pretend, depending on the full moveset, it could kill off a number of things. Yeah, okay, so we're going to see the Amoongus there. Um, not surprising. And oh, okay, so even better. Um, not going to go for the kill, but he's going to now position himself even better. Yeah, because that prevents for breaking this up and then letting it get thunder. Wow. Okay, nice play there. And now the Amoongus can click um, follow me or whatever the fuck that move is that um, will lure in the other attacks. So while the Dazzling will break this up and the Coke will die after, the Thunder will go into the Amoongus. Okay. This changes matters. Um, wow. Nice positioning there from Bowman. I like how he's played the last couple turns. Um... Alright, so we're going to see the Dazzling Gleam. No, um... Oh, so he's going to Sacred Sword it. Okay, so he's going to kill the Chansey. And then he's going to Sludge Bomb the Coco, right? Wow, okay, even better. So he gets the double kill there, putting himself in a 4-3 to three position, which is likely a positive position at this point, which... Wow, okay, he, he saw through that even better than I did. I thought that killing the Coco with the, the Katana was better, but no, no, no. That actually is much better. Well, well done. And now the Kiriman and Sinner are going to come out. So now it's a bit of a fake-out mind game in a sense. I reckon that um, the Kiram is probably going to pick something off, though. Um. <sighs> um. Wow, this actually looks really hard for Fespi to win now. Shit, that, that was a really nice sequence from Bauman. Um, <laughs> I wonder if we're going to see the Lando come in to try and get a second Intimidate as the fake out happens and then maybe a pivot to um, Kieran Black in that spot. I don't know. It would require a series of precisely maneuvered switches that would all work out sufficiently in order to neutralize this situation, I would say. Hmm. Bowman's timer is at 150. Fespi's down to 60 seconds, but I think he's already clicked. As I would have hit 40 by now. Um, the doubles players in the chat are gassing up Bowman, so... I think that my belief... Oh, Vespi's on the 30 now. Okay, wow. Um, I guess there's no 40 seconds in the timer? Well, we're going to see Protect from both. Uh, blocking out the Fake Out and the Icy Wind. Okay. Good play from Bowman. Now the Fake Out is wasted. And now um, Cartana picks one with Sacred Sword. Um, I think that would probably be a fine trade. As the Azumarill should be able to 1v1 the Landris. Um, I kind of wonder what the Amoongus slot's going to do here. Um, it could have... Oh, Landris is going to come in here. Um, I see when he's going to be faster? What? Oh, and he's going to Sacred Sword into the Landris. Oh, gosh. Oh, he's also going to Spore into the Landris. Wow. 
cool play. So it was a catch-all play. Okay, so he spored knowing that if the Landers comes in, then he's going to catch with a spore. Otherwise, he at least kills the Incineroar. Okay, that was like a really good play, even though the slow Kartana kind of surprised me. Um, wow. So now Landers being asleep. I'm not quite sure if Bowman can really lose this game. If Zumbo comes in on a protect, and Kartana's going to attack into the Kiram on a protect. Okay. Oh, wow. Um, so on the bright side, he bought himself another fake out, but he's now not only Mon um, numerically disadvantaged, but one of his vital Pokemon in the back is also asleep. So I'm not sure how this is going to work out for Fespi. He's done to 20 seconds. Um, he's going to have to click pretty quickly. 15. Um, big turn. Well, it seems like Bowman hasn't clicked at this point. Because Fesky, yeah, Bowman's at 90 now instead of 120. Okay. Um, oh, we're going to see the Amoongus pivot back. It's going to get regenerated. Oh, it's going to come in on a Fusion Balls as well, which is helpful. And he's going to take out the Kiram. Yep. So it's going to be a 4-2 game. But the Incineroar is going to flip. Let's cut on to make it 4-3. to three, uh, No, no, 3-2, to two, rather. Um, Landers Cheese, of course, going to come on in. Poco can come on in here, and I'm pretty sure it can pretty much come kill here. Incineroar don't run for tech. It's usually Flare Blitz. Fake out, knock off, U turn, and the Landris is asleep, so it doesn't really matter. So it is free reign over what's in front of him, I would say, um, if you're Bowman. And he's going to switch out to his own role, taking advantage of just that. Fake out's going to fail. What? All right, well, either way, Bowman pretty much wins. I'm not really sure why he faked out, but. Um, Aqua Jet. Combined with nature's madness, giving it I a Papa Berry, and then Jet here, nature's madness. So this Coco just can't touch um, Landris. Interesting. But anyway, um, now yeah, game's over. So good game. Bowman's going to walk away with a win, not only for himself, but also for his team and a real nail-biter.